Hey, happy Freight Friday here from Freight Waves. I'm Chad Prevost. And I'm Emily Zink. It is great to be here with you. So much has been happening in this crazy week. I mean, there's been, there's been weather things, volumes have fallen off a cliff. Who are we going to talk about to give us a lay of the land? Yeah, a lot of big stories going on right now. But of course, we're going to start with the weather because it's a long weekend. So people want to know what the weather's like. So we're going to go over to Nick Austin. All different colors we're looking at here. What is going on in the world of weather? I know there was a lot of severe weather. Is that going to be a threat continuing into the weekend? Well, don't let all the colors scare you too okay. much. <laughs> there will be some severe storms, yes, across some of the same parts of the plains up in the Midwest. Uh, but the good news is that the, the risk for severe weather is not as great as it has been through most of the week so far. Today's probably going to be the quietest day that we've seen this week as far as tornadoes, severe storms popping up, uh, things like that. So, but there is still that chance that we could see some severe weather, you know, some high winds, large hail, maybe some isolated tornadoes uh, anywhere from West Texas all the way up to even near the Chicago metro area. So it's along a large swath. Yes. Yeah, it but, covers a long, yeah. But that doesn't mean that everywhere okay. in that region is going to see storms. But that's where the risk area is. The, ske the severe storms will be kind of scattered about, you know. But so just be weather aware. Just There's be weather aware. There's a possibility if you're in that area. Not much snow either. Um, there were some you know, really heavy areas of snow. Yeah, earlier in, in the, the week. In the Rockies earlier in the week. So overall, things are definitely starting to kind of quiet down as far as the weather. There should be fewer weather-related weather disruptions in freight movement as we head into the holiday weekend, which is a good thing, uh, and easier also for a lot of the drivers to get home. So there won't be a lot of weather problems. We want to do just kind of focus in on one critical event area. This is in the St. Louis area. Now, we, we, you saw on the map those kind of donuts that were like yeah, green and circling. orange. Yeah. Um, and those represent the different assets that might be uh, under some kind of severe weather risk, whether it's flooding from high winds, whatever. Um, this is great how it tells you exactly where you're looking and what part. Yeah, and we're not really concerned. The ones that show up in green, those aren't those aren't worry areas. But if they show up in orange or even red, uh, the that that's not good. The orange is a, a medium risk. Red is high risk. We don't have any high risk areas right now, but these are showing just what assets are kind of under the risk for certain types of severe weather. In this case, flooding at the Port of St. Louis. Um, also, some um, some of the rails that uh, go through St. Louis, BNSF and also Union Pacific are either uh, out of service or they're being watched very closely for the potential of flood damage. Some of them have already been damaged by floods and, and are still closed. Uh, so that's one thing that critical events shows really well. And it also shows you how long the threat kind of lasts. It's and a really and good sonar level. feature. Yeah, this one yeah. has 12 hours remaining, remaining and right? yeah. Um, there are there have been some problems up near the port of Chicago too, with at least a chance, a risk for some uh, possible uh, flood damage up there. So they're keeping an eye on things up there as well. So just another great thing that you can see on the critical events. Feature, well, in flooding, you have to take so seriously. We were do. watching video yesterday. The barge, where was that out of Tulsa area? Oh, that was in, that was in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, I don't yeah. The exact area, but it was along the Arkansas yeah. River. And it's crazy though. Yeah, these two water. barges got loose. It looked like they were empty, but these two barges got loose and crashed into a dam. Yeah. So a, a lot of a lot of different bad things can happen when you have, uh, especially flash flooding from severe storms, especially when it happens over the same areas, again and again over several days. Uh, it's just it it really causes lots of problems uh, yeah. with transportation and and just disrupting people's lives. It's. Uh, and they're going to, luckily that's, that's going to improve uh, today because the severe weather threat is at least a lot lower. So that's good. Definitely what we folks. like to hear and something very right. interesting too. severe weather last week. We're going to go out west a little bit more yes. talking about California, the cherry crop. Unfortunately, yes. there was severe weather that really hurt that cherry crop. Now we're looking today. That was last week in that was last freight weekend. volumes right. yep. are down. Rates are down. Um, Rejections, you know, rejections, rejections, everything in Stockton, it's yep. kind of correlating. I'm no expert on this. But we have but one. We do have one, yeah. <laughs> Dean Croak, he's going to talk about kind of how that weather is impacting prices and right. all that stuff. So uh, 
Nick, before I bring you on weather, I just want to set the stage around what we're seeing out in the West Coast, because you wrote a great article this week about the damage to the cherry crop uh, from the rainstorms, which doesn't normally happen this time of the year. Right. right about now in the lead up to Memorial Day, this is peak time for growers in the San Joaquin Valley, just outside of San Francisco. And what's happened though with the rain is it's decimated the crop. We've lost about 1,500 truckloads of freight. Um, the reason it's such a big deal is they've lost about 30% of their crop, it looks like, as a result of the two storms that, that we're going to talk about in a second. Um, California produces about 20% of our total crop. It's literally only a six week season. So the California season is very short because of the weather patterns very consistent normally. Uh, we, one of the biggest states that produces uh, cherries is Washington State. So the Pacific Northwest has actually got a different climate. They've got some microclimate issues I want to ask you about. Their season's about twice as long as California. But because California is lower, it comes online first. And it's one of the, the sweet cherries are, are sort of one of the most uh, sought after cherries globally at this time of the year. So uh, if you're looking for cherries right now and you see them, because they don't ripen after they're picked, buy what you see because uh, supply is diminishing and prices are going to increase. But what you can see here is that on our sonar chart for cherries, prices increase about 40% every summer. Uh, but what's going to happen, of course, now, well, we're not sure because prices may go even higher. Um, this morning I worked past the, the greengrocer and prices were up in the $9 a pound range. So prices are already starting to move up. Uh, what I wanted to show you a little bit about um, is, Nick, is, is the weather pattern that you wrote about on Wednesday's article on Freight Waves Now, right. where you talked about the, the, the impact on volume, tender rejections and the rain that was uh, the rain that came through in two storms. I want you to go through the impact because um, there's a little bit, there's something that's happening that's not normal and I want you to talk right. about that. And it, so what happened last weekend was parts of the Sacramento Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, um, that's where a lot of the cherry growers are in California. Correct. And typically this time of the year, on an average day in late May, they might get about that much rain. I mean, if any, you know, we're talking about an average rainfall of two or three hundredths of an inch, which is nothing. It's next to nothing. Generally speaking, if you get an inch of rain in one day from a storm, it doesn't sound like a lot to most people. But for those areas that typically stay so dry this time of the year, that is a lot of rain. And a lot of areas in those valleys where these growers are, they got anywhere a Saturday and Sunday last weekend. Some of them got hit both days got anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch of rain when they normally have nothing. But there was also some strong wind and there was also large hail. These were strong to severe thunderstorms too. So when you put all those factors, all those things together, the, the cherries either got torn apart or they just got drenched so much before being picked that they're now just useless. Right. We can and see on the chart here, that's the effect of the two rainstorms. Right. The orange line is the forecast rain for those two events. And then immediately after that, you can see the effect where uh, refrigerated tender ejections dropped about 20% uh, or 20 basis points over that time. So that, uh, you know, with fewer loads, carriers had fewer choices, so right. they rejected fewer loads. So that was one of the interesting data points. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you now a little bit about is the microclimates up north. Because the, the season in the Pacific Northwest, Montana, Idaho, Washington, uh, it, it's about twice as long. It'll start early June and go all the way through to August, um, ending the cherry season up in British Columbia. So as, as we go through the year and the summer, cherry season goes further north. So can you talk a little bit about microclimates and, and how that affects the Pacific Northwest? Right. Well, I mean, Washington State and California both have microclimates. Right. Um, and that's because they, they have such different topography across the state. They have coastline and then they have mountains and they have valleys. And so the weather is going to change, even if you're strictly talking about temperature, the weather is going to change from one region of the state to the other. Uh, California is a great example of that too. Um, right, right at the coast on the beaches of Los Angeles, on a sunny day, it could be 70 degrees at, a, you know, say a 10 o'clock in the morning. But if you go into downtown Los Angeles, which isn't that far away, uh, it could be 10 or 15 degrees warmer. And then if you go into the valley that we were mentioning earlier, the Sacramento Valley, San Joaquin, it could be 100 degrees. And then you go in the mountains and it can only be 60. So when you get these microclimates, um, that's important for farmers because um, depending on which microclimate in that state you are, that's going to affect soil temperature, 
it affects how much moisture you get on an average day during a growing season. So they have to think about all that. Thanks, Nick. Um, what I wanted to do just in our wrap up is talk a little bit about the impact on freight volumes. Um, as a result of the two storms, a couple of things happened. Um, if we have a look at our chart, what we'll see is that the outbound tender reject in Stockton market around the time of the two storms here dropped off about 20%. Um, at the same time, our green line, which is the refrigerated uh, tender reject index, which is for specialised carriers hauling the cherries, it dropped off also. So uh, this means that as the number of loads disappeared from the market, we lost about 1,500 loads from the market this week. That meant that carriers had fewer choices, which meant they were rejecting fewer loads, which meant capacity increased in the refrigerated market and dropped all the way down here. So we're heading into a weekend where normally carriers are looking for eastbound freight out of the west coast to get home for weekends. Um, it looks like we've lost out of the typical 5,000 loads that we get over the course of the six week period, we've lost about 1,500 loads, which is a really big deal. And if we have a look at the next slide, we'll see that on the impact on rates, um, uh, full, load, full truck load rates out of the west coast have dropped about two to three percent over the course um, of the last few weeks. Normally, um, if you look back, these are full load prices. This is 75.50 for a load from San Francisco to Boston. Um, Chicago and JFK are listed here. All had the same sorts of decline in freight rates. Um, they were about 15% higher this time last year. So freight rates are down. Uh, it's going to affect the operating profitability of, uh, of operators. There's more capacity on the West Coast. So it's actually a pretty big deal. These two rainstorms are having a significant impact on both growers whose crops have been devastated and on carriers who would normally be looking for um, good freight rates out of the West Coast this time of the year. Well, thanks for the commentary from our market experts. Great stuff, long weekend ahead. You know, just like try to have some fun out there, be safe. Emily, what are you doing? I love how you say try to have some fun. I think everyone's gonna have fun when they have time off. I'm going to Tampa actually, seeing my family. Okay. What are you doing? I'm going to try to have fun. I'm gonna disc golf, I'm gonna mountain bike. Because everybody's Your doing Your idea this. of fun is different than I think everyone else's <laughs> idea of fun. But we want to know what you guys are doing this weekend. And we also want you to follow us on our, all of our social media channels. Also, that story about Cherry is quite interesting. Kind of how the weather affects the freight market and all that. That's on FreightWaves.com. Yes, check that out for further, deeper analysis and commentary. Yes, yeah, join our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to share the love. We like having you tune in each and every day at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. So thanks for tuning in, and in the meantime, don't worry, be happy.